Hello, family. Welcome back. I hope you guys are doing great. I wanted to pass something along that somebody shared with me a while back, and I just haven't had a chance to share it, but it's extremely interesting. It's one of those things you just have to share, and the people I've talked to about it had never heard of it, so I figured maybe you haven't, and it's great that we share information that we come across, kind of break some of the mystery of what's going on beyond where we're allowed to explore. And this story is one of those that will blow your mind because it reveals sort of what we already assumed would be going on there. But this person that shared this with me was very kind and said, hey, this is really cool. Have you heard about this? And I haven't heard anything about it until they shared it. This channel here, yup, yup, oh, one, two, three. And they said, I found this on Facebook and I think it's worth sharing with you all. I kept the original post's layout untouched to keep its originality. So um, they've broken it up. You'll see what I'm talking about or what they're talking about here in just a second. And the story, I will scroll to it, starts right here. And this person reached out on one of those Truth or Facebook pages. There's lots of them where they were talking about the firmament. And they had a military background. And they said, I've never really believed in Jesus or done the whole church thing. But I think I've seen the stuff you guys are talking about here. I just didn't know what it was at the time. This person was in the Army from 1997 to 2000, and they said, I was sent to McMurdo Station in Antarctica. I was a helicopter mechanic and a crew chief, and they had volunteer tours open for guys to go there and work on the helicopters there. When they asked for volunteers, sorry, there's some typos here. I'll try to read it and say what I believe they were trying to say, but it says, um, when they asked for volunteers, a bunch of us applied, but only me and one other guy got accepted. The application process had a bunch of questionnaires that we had to fill out, and we had to sit for a bunch of one-on-one -on -one interviews. It was mostly just a bunch of questions about what our interests and beliefs were. It's weird that they would ask about their beliefs. Hmm. I was sent to McMurdo Research Station in August of 1998. When we weren't busy de-icing the aircraft, and working on them, we had time to hang out with the scientists at the research station. The military unit attached to McMurdo was small, and we didn't have our own separate facilities. We didn't have a PX or a media center. There was no chapel or chaplain, and we didn't have our own separate mailroom. We just had to share the same facilities with the scientists and researchers, so over time, I got to be friends with a few of them. They had two different kinds of ice they worked on and studied. This is where it gets interesting. One kind of ice was the normal kind that we've all seen. They took cores of it out of boreholes in the ground. Just like normal ice, it was mostly clear and sometimes white, and it would melt into liquid water if it got warm. The whole area of Antarctica is covered in this kind of ice. But that wasn't their main kind of ice. The only time I ever saw them actually studying normal ice was when a film crew from National Geographic came by. The rest of the time, <laughs> which was most of the time, the scientists were studying something they called sky ice. This stuff was totally different. We were never allowed to go into the laboratory areas of the station because the labs had to be kept super clean and they said it would mess up their work if they risked letting too many people in the lab. But one time, one of the researchers that I was friends with showed me a piece of sky ice. You couldn't touch the stuff with your bare hands because it was so cold. And it wasn't clear or white like normal ice. It was solid blue. He said that's why they call it sky ice. Because it was the exact same color as the sky. We had to wear a thick heavy going outside gloves to handle it. The stuff was so cold it would instantly freeze your skin if you touched it. I don't remember what the temperature he said it was, but it was something like hundreds of degrees below zero, way colder than the normal ice that was outside. He had to carry it in a metal bottle that was kind of like a thermos. He let me play with the piece of it for a while. It felt lighter than a piece of normal ice of the same size, like it wasn't very heavy at all. It almost felt like you could throw it up in the air and it would just float back down, but I didn't try that and it was also a little flexible when I tried to bend it. It didn't break like normal ice would, and even for a small piece, you could see through it. It was solid blue right from the surface. 
And here's the really weird part. It didn't melt into water. When it got warm, because we had it inside, it just started to shrink. It got smaller and smaller, but my glove never got wet. And there was no water on the floor. The stuff just turned into thin air when it got warm and vaporized. He said that was the reason why they had to study the stuff right there in Antarctica. You couldn't take the sky ice back to America to study it because it was almost impossible to keep it cold enough during transit. And then they shared a verse right here where it says, And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And then we continue off where it says, It would always vaporize into air, and you'd have nothing left when you got back to the U.S., he said. Russian scientists had discovered the same problem when they tried to take the ice back to Russia. So that was why they, had, they all had research stations in Antarctica. After maybe 15 minutes of handling the piece of sky ice, it was almost completely gone. Just like just a tiny little bit was left, and my glove was dry the whole time. I'd never seen anything like it before or since, and that's unusual because I've always had an interest in scientific things. I think that's even why I got selected to go to Antarctica because a big part of the interview was about science and what I believed about things. So I really thought it was cool to see something I'd never heard of before. The whole time I was at McMurdo, I heard, of, I heard people talking about the wall like that was a special place. It's pretty common to find ice walls and ice cliffs all over Antarctica. The whole place is ice, but it's all just normal, white, or clear ice. So I asked my friend where they get the sky ice from, and he said it comes from the wall. I don't remember exactly how he described it, but apparently there's a huge wall of sky ice in Antarctica. He said it was hundreds of miles inland from the coast. I never got to see it myself because I was only, and then I'm going to skip forward, stationed to McMurdo. I didn't get to go out on expeditions. He said it was the biggest natural structure in the world. Imagine that. He said that in the 1960s, the U.S. Army had a plan to bore a tunnel into the wall, but they didn't have a boring machine that could handle the super cold temperatures, so they had a whole testing project in Greenland where they developed ice tunnels and intended, or sorry, and invented <laughs> new boring machines that could operate in super cold temperatures. So this was back when they were going into forming NASA and all the other things that were kind of strange, the Antarctic Treaty, around that time, pretty close to it. And he says, like they did this whole big thing in Greenland for just practice. So it was like they were practicing to bore into the sky ice. I'm not an expert on that, but that's just what he told me. Then, once they had the new boring machine figured out, they brought it to the ice wall, or to the wall in Antarctica. He said that the machine bored a tunnel I don't remember exactly, it was like 5 or 10 miles into the wall, but that they never broke through the other side of the wall, and that they still don't know how thick the wall is even to this day. And I'm probably not remembering this part correctly, but I think he said that at first the floor of the tunnel was solid rock, but after a mile or two in, the floor was sky ice, like it was sky ice underneath after a certain point or something like that, and apparently the wall slowly builds itself back up. So it slowly builds itself back up after you cut it, because after a year or so, the tunnel had shrunk smaller all by itself, like a self-healing wound. <laughs> it starts closing up. They had to leave the boring machine inside the wall because the tunnel shrunk too small to get it back out. And after a few decades, the tunnel was completely gone, like the part of the wall was solid again. He said that now the scientists were trying to use technology to figure out how thick the wall is. He said something about putting earthquake sensors all along the wall and that somehow you could measure the signal from an earthquake to see how thick the wall is. But, th but he kind of lost me at that, on that part. I never really thought about any of that after I left. It was really weird stuff, but I didn't think it was a big deal at the time. But then a few weeks ago, I saw a map of the wall in Antarctica except the map was all flat and crazy looking, and it showed the wall going all the way up over the whole earth. 
So since then, I've been trying to learn more about the sky ice that I saw and the wall that I heard about, but I can't find anything at all. So now I'm really wondering if there could be a connection here. And that's how I found this group. So I hope that maybe some part of my experience will help someone figure something out. Well, thankful to that person if they were telling the truth. That is some very interesting information given what we know surrounds us. We know that the firmament's not just made out of ice. It's something special. That could just be something near the foundation to prevent you from going all the way to it. The Father's design is very complex, and he has foreknowledge. He knows what mankind's going to try to do. Those little nuclear bombs they shot at the firmament was nothing <laughs> to the firmament. They can't break it. They've tried. If they could, they would, but they can't. And this is just one of those stories that confirms a lot of what I had assumed would be going on. I always thought, man, if they are out there and they can go to it, they're probably trying to drill through it. And if they are, how have they not gotten through it already? And that would answer the, the question for you because it closes up as you go through it. But this was back in the 60s. There's no telling what they're trying now mostly guarding it. I'm sure that's the biggest job they have is keeping us from going there. And if you do go there, you can only go to certain places. It is tens of thousands of dollars for a one-way ticket. Otherwise, many of us would have already gone there, tried to do some sneaking around and investigating. But this video here, it only had like 300 views, but really cool stuff. Wanted to pass this along. I know the days of censorship have it to where you can't find stuff like this anymore. And I remembered putting it in my firmament playlist. I just wasn't sure if you guys had heard about this and wanted to pass it along to you. Answers some questions that most of you, if you're like me, had about what's going on out there and what are some of the properties near the foundation of the firmament, if they're even close to it. Could go on like that for many, many miles. Who knows? We'll find out soon someday. The firmament itself will roll away like a scroll. But that second day of creation where he put this expanse for signs and for seasons and letting us know that he will return very soon and it's one of those things that we're sensing is right around the corner due to the way things are going in the world and what they're trying to prepare us for and all the division but they're preparing for a war i'll go over that in a little while in another video what they're preparing for and how you can be prepared yourself to not fall for the deceptions to come but uh See you guys around soon. I know that this is a random video and I'm just trying to put this stuff out there and stop procrastinating and share the information that I have while we still can. I'll see you guys really soon. Stay safe and stay ready.